We've been in captivity for 400 years. We've been denied, denied our heritage, our land, uh, what rightfully belongs to us as a people. David Anderson and Francine Graham were both found dead after that hours-long standoff with police. Sources telling us that Anderson was a one-time follower of the Black Hebrew Israelites, a fringe group labeled as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. You got Go ahead, get them right there. Y'all doing that right up. That, that talk talk in the back as a couple, keeping the booth for the, the prophets of the Lord. None of that. Come on, come on. Push on up. One time, we were over there, and they had the charts up. The tribe of Nephthali, that's Martin Kenny Chiller, that's the rest of South America. Come on, Pop, you know that ain't right. He said, of course, Danny, I know that's not right. He said, but that's the hook. That's how we get them in the place, and we wire them up to what's true. Since the dispersion of the Jews in 70 AD, there's been a quest to find the lost people of Israel. Who are they? Have they kept the practices of old? Is there a sacred bloodline that points back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And if so, are they the black people we see today in America? The claim that there's a select group of people in America who are God's chosen and are from the lost tribe of Israel is not synonymous to blacks in America. In fact, one particular group led by a radio slash television evangelist, Herbert Armstrong, who founded the Worldwide Church of God in 1934, had claims that some Americans were part of the lost tribes of Israel. My friends, do you know the astounding, astonishing news? The people of the United States today are naturally, physically born Israelites. This belief is sometimes referred to as Armstrongism or British Israelism. When studying the tenets of their beliefs, you'll find black Hebrew Israelites and British Israelism are strikingly similar. If you're interested in this topic, I urge you to study this after the video since we won't be discussing that here. In this particular series, however, we're going to be addressing the claims that black people in America are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. We're going to study science, history, and scripture to address common arguments being made about this particular claim. The purpose of this series is to go on a quest for truth, biblical truth. We must have a biblical understanding of who God is and who his people are. This series isn't about degrading a person's self-identification or to insult someone's adopted culture. Here are the topics I plan to cover in this series. The Deuteronomy 2868 claims, DNA matching, and the 400 year prophecy. So stay tuned and enjoy the videos. The foundation of the belief that blacks in America are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible comes from the passage Deuteronomy 2868, which reads in the KJV, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondsmen and bondswomen, and no man shall buy you. The key words extracted from this passage are ships and sold. The narrative is this is a prophecy concerning black people during the transatlantic slave trade. One question that is usually asked rhetorically is, what other people do you know fit those curses besides blacks in America? The first flaw in this question is assuming slavery wasn't present in the world until the transatlantic slave trade. There's plenty of evidence where the Romans and Arabs practiced slave trading almost a thousand years prior. Secondly, for those who agree slavery isn't synonymous to the transatlantic slave trade, but still adhere to the argument, believe blacks were the ones commonly transported by ships more than anyone else in history. This again is another fallacious argument since it is recorded that Arabs and Romans transported slaves by ships since that was the common way to travel long distances during that time period. And the third flaw to push their narrative is about the text referring to the Israelites being forcefully brought back to Egypt on ships to be sold. A close reading of the text indicates the Lord, not their oppressors, would bring them back to Egypt when we read the modern translations. Another common argument is the word Egypt is metaphorical to bondage 
and it is not the physical location the Most High was referring to. When we go back to the passage, notice the phrases, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. This was a reference to Deuteronomy 17, 16, which referenced physical Egypt, not a metaphor for bondage. Also, the word Egypt, which is pronounced Mizraim, is referenced as the physical land every time it is mentioned in the Bible. Again, not a metaphor for bondage, and that is found nowhere in Scripture. Finally, let's examine the last part of the passage which states, And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. That has to be one of the clearest indications that this passage isn't referring to blacks of the transatlantic slave trade. Nowhere in history during that time period was it ever recorded blacks willingly offered themselves as slaves to Europeans and no one bought them. In fact, quite the opposite happened as it is recorded throughout history. In conclusion to this part of the video series, we can clearly see with the correct reading of Deuteronomy 28 and 68 in this context, this is in no way a reference to blacks during the transatlantic slave trade. Next, we're going to dive into the 400 year prophecy claims in which we will continue to discuss more fallacious claims concerning Deuteronomy 28.